The circumstances surrounding the mysterious disappearance and death of Courtney Lynn Townsend are bizarre, and I need everyone to go down this rabbit hole with me. 33-year-old Courtney Townsend was last seen on November 16th of last year in Hurricane Utah. So that day, she had taken her parents' car from their home in St. George without their permission and began driving. About a half hour before her parents reported the car stolen, Courtney was pulled over in Hurricane for speeding, and the body cam footage from the police officer showed her acting really nervous. He asked her where she was going, in which she replied Cedar City, and then he gave her a citation. But before he could leave, Courtney tried handing him a small jewelry box with an envelope folded up in the middle, but the officer said that he couldn't take it and drove off, letting her go. Now, after this, Courtney vanished, but three days later, the car she was driving was found at a campsite in a wooded area on Cedar Mountain. It was stuck on some rocks and completely burnt to a crisp, and this was kind of in the area of Duck Creek, about 10 feet off the road. Found around the car were a bunch of items, including Navy dog tags, a wallet, and a handful of credit cards and IDs, none of which belonged to Courtney. At this point, Courtney hadn't been reported missing yet, and the car was in Kane County, a completely different jurisdiction. So the Kane County Sheriff's Office didn't know the circumstances surrounding the situation. But instead of looking further into a burned vehicle, police treated the car as arson and had it towed away where it was quickly taken to an impound lot and destroyed. This is important to note because all potential evidence that could have been left behind in the car was now destroyed. So after a couple of weeks of no contact from Courtney, which was odd because she talked to her parents almost every day, they officially reported her missing to the St. George Police on December 2nd. This is when Courtney's disappearance was connected to the burned vehicle found a few weeks prior, but but at this point, police said that they couldn't do a ground search of the area until all of the snow had melted, which would likely be midsummer. While they waited, the family searched for Courtney themselves, and they even hired a private investigator, but it was like Courtney vanished into thin air, and nothing was found. When police did their first initial search, it was early May, and they reportedly searched near where her car was found, searching for over 400 hours and walking over 200 miles. But they found nothing, which is odd, because just a couple of weeks later, on May 27th, a person who was out riding their ATV on Cedar Mountain in the Duck Creek Ridge area stumbled across some clothing on the side of the road. This person was supposedly familiar with Courtney's disappearance, so they called police who brought in tracking dogs, and they came across partial human remains near a water tank. When I say partial, I mean only pieces of her were found. But after comparing them to dental records, it was confirmed that they did belong to Courtney. What's sad is the fact that this was extremely close to where her burned car was found six months prior. So Courtney was found, but so many questions remain in this case, like how she ended up where she did, where the rest of her remains are, and how exactly she died. According to the Utah State Medical Examiner, Courtney's cause of death couldn't be determined because of how little remains were found, and they can't tell when she died either. But what's odd is that even though there is so little evidence left behind, authorities don't suspect foul play, and the Kane County Sheriff's Office isn't even investigating her death anymore. They said that one theory is that she was driving down the road that day, became high-centered on some rocks, which started a fire, and her death, however she may have died, was accidental. According to the police officer who found Courtney's car, it had snowed overnight, and when he located the car, it was cold to the touch, and there were no footprints in the snow, which means that it was burned sometime before the snow fell. What needs to be investigated further is the fact that Courtney got married a month before she went missing, and according to her family and friends, the man was really abusive towards her. From an outsider's perspective, and after talking with Courtney's sister, it really seems like the police dropped the ball on this investigation, and this situation in specific. A friend of the family has gone on to hire a professional dog handler in hopes of locating more of Courtney's remains, but it wasn't what they found that was shocking, it was what they didn't. The friend didn't tell the professional they hired where the remains were found, and they did this so that they could hopefully get a fresh scent and pick up on more remains. But the dogs ended up searching the exact area where Courtney's remains were found, yet they didn't pick up on a single hit. No trace or scent of Courtney was found, which led this professional to believe that Courtney died elsewhere and the bones that were found were brought to that location by either an animal or person after the fact. Adding to this mystery is the fact that in February of this year, a backpack was found on a city truck in St. George that contained items that belonged to Courtney. She was a loving mom, and it included her kids' birth certificates as well as other personal items. At this point, it's believed that Courtney had already been dead on Cedar Mountain for some time. So how did her belongings get on this city truck so far away, and who put them there? That has never been answered, and it's one of the main reasons that Courtney's family can't get any closure. All evidence points to there being foul play, yet police aren't even investigating her death anymore, even though so many questions remain. There's a Facebook page called Justice for Courtney, which is run by her sister, and some pictures have been posted of the site where Courtney's remains were found. And it's just really creepy what has been left behind, like this plate that has sledgehammer written on it. Someone in the group also looked up the exact coordinates of where Courtney's remains were found, and what's odd is that they found Google Earth images taken the day after her car was towed. You can see the burn 
marks in the ground, but what others are pointing out is that it looks like a woman is standing there. But who that person is, no one knows. It looks like she has brown hair and is wearing a black hoodie and blue jeans. This could be nothing, but it just doesn't seem like a coincidence that this was taken a day after her burned car was found. I just have so many questions in this case, like who those IDs belong to that were found near the burned car, and also what was inside the envelope that Courtney tried giving to the police officer. And more importantly, where's the rest of Courtney's body? Her family has created a GoFundMe to help finance and continue this independent investigation, so I'll leave that here. It's now been four months since she was found, but the circumstances surrounding her death remain a mystery.